Hey everyone, welcome to Therapy Connections, the podcast where real therapists give you the highlights of the things we say in therapy and provide some skills, education, and ideas about how to feel better. This is not a replacement for traditional therapy, but can serve as a tool for refreshing and learning between sessions. Thanks for joining us. Hello everybody, thanks for coming to today's video. Um, We're going to be talking about mindfulness today. More about what mindfulness is and less about how to do mindfulness, but we're going to do this in two parts. So the next video will be about specifically how do I do mindfulness. Um, But as for what mindfulness is, where do you guys start with your clients when you want to talk about mindfulness? Shara, that's you. I I think that it's important for people to understand, like you just said, that there's kind of a difference between mindfulness and meditation. Sometimes we hear the word mindfulness and we automatically assume that that means meditation. But that's not what mindfulness is at all. Mindfulness is the ability to be present in the moment, where you're at right now, and choosing how you're going to pay attention to that moment. So, um, you know, it's not having your brain someplace in the future or someplace in the past, actually just right where you are. Yeah, so meditation is mindfulness, but not all mindfulness is meditation. Right. Okay. One of the ways that I like to think about it is mindfulness is developing an awareness of all of the things that are you. Developing awareness of your thoughts, your feelings, and in lots of cases, even what you're experiencing in your body, right? Certain pains or if I'm feeling anxiety, where in my body do I feel it? And I think mindfulness is the practice of developing the awareness um, and not necessarily doing something about it if it's <clears throat> if it's uncomfortable, but just developing an awareness of it. The doing something comes later. <clears throat> later. I, I think that's totally true. You know, and sometimes I think the first time I heard the term mindfulness, I was like, I still do not get it. You know, somebody explained it to me and I was like, that is so abstract. And sometimes um it feels that way when you're first learning mm-hmm. about it or learning how to do it. But it really isn't that abstract. It really is just figuring out, like Josh said, how to be aware. Aware of what's going on inside of and around you in a given moment. Yeah, I think we live such busy lives. I'm sure people have always lived busy lives, but they always say, right, people are busier now than ever before. And there's always a tendency to want to be getting so many things done at once. And we always feel like we have so much to do and have to accomplish all of that in a day. Um, we know that people are really bad at multitasking Um, we all still do it anyways but we're not good at it and so a lot of times I think of mindfulness as just doing one thing at a time just what if you you may have a a task list that's as long as your arm but Mm -hmm. just do the one part one part at a time and it's much easier to be mindful that way than to be you can't really be mindfully doing 50 things (laughs) right why would you guys say that mindfulness is actually so important, especially for those of us who maybe have like some depression or anxiety or other stuff going on? I always think of people always use like analogy like that life's like a roller coaster, it has ups and downs or hills and valleys, how whatever analogy you want to use. And if you're not being mindful, it gets really easy to when you're on the ups part of these hills and roller coasters, be thinking about the lows and what was the last big low in my life and this horrible experience I went through and when is it going to get bad again, right? Embracing for this next hard event. And then you spend your whole life living in the lows because when you're on the highs, you're not thinking about it. You're not there. You're living in the lows still. Um, And so the simplest way I always put it, I think, is if you're living mindfully and living presently, good things in your life are better, they're more fun, and hard things are more manageable. This might just be a me thing and my struggles for control over all kinds of things. But I think being mindful, it keeps you in control or at least it helps Um, because then you don't become future focused or past focused, which then introduces symptoms of depression, and anxiety. And so I think part of the importance of mindfulness is it gives you the ability to make effective decisions in your life that hopefully improve all aspects of your life. Mm -hmm. That's one thing, one reason Mm -hmm. I think it's important. Yeah. And like you were just saying, I mean, real mental health is 
based in the present moment and our mind and our body being in the present moment. When our brain is in the future, we often feel really anxious. And when our brain is in the past, we often feel depressed. Mm -hmm. And so if we want to have, if we want to be resilient and if we want to have good mental health, the best thing that we can do is be present. What kind of things do you think distract us in like modern life in today's world from being mindful? What makes it so hard to be mindful? Um, as you're saying that, I was just thinking about, uh, my family loves to go camping during the summer. And one of the things that I started to notice is that always on the last day of camping, um, I start to think about all of the tasks that I have coming up. So, you know, we would be on four wheelers and I'm sitting and thinking about all the laundry that this is going to cause me to have oh, to go home. That sounds do. terrible. <laughs> it, it is terrible. And you know what? Um, I think I, that happened on like two or three different camping trips before I was like, this is ruining my trip, right? But sometimes my brain does that. It just gets really focused on all of the tasks coming up, all of the things that I'm going to have to do. And it ruins what's going on in the present. Like there I was in the mountains with my family in this beautiful space. And all I can think about is laundry because my brain's in the future as opposed to being yeah. in the present. So I think tasks are one thing. Um, worries are another. Things that just come up that you worry about and that stops you from being present. I think for um, this is for everyone, but depending on populations you work with, performance-based things when you work with teens or even young adults who are in college, life revolves around finals week and tests and um, pop quizzes that come up or sports, you know, for teens and kids too, their performance in uh, sporting events. It's interesting, I think, if I think about as an adult, kids distract us from being mindful employment distracts us from being mindful finances distract us from being mindful relationships uh, really all of it if if one of those areas feels off base a little bit then we become off base and it becomes very stressful and then we're not mindful we're thinking about laundry while we're riding four-wheelers yeah <laughs> that sounds so bad um, one that I actually hear quite regularly is Sunday night People will start to feel the Sunday scaries. The huh? I've not heard it referred to that. I like that. <laughs> the Sunday scaries, but it kind of ruins the back half of the weekend because you feel all these things that you have to get ready to do come Monday, whether it's work or school or whatever. It's back into the yeah. routine. Mm -hmm. I think there's a uh, my own when I think of myself and my own struggles with mindfulness. I always think of like all the distractions I put in my own life. Um, like listening to a podcast every time I take a shower and listening to music and oh, stuff yeah. when I'm driving to work and <clears throat> just always having something to like entertain me. Um, I was just talking to someone about this yesterday, like what, ha finding a YouTube video before you eat, like finding the right YouTube video before you eat, right? Man. And there are so many places in life where we just fill our brain with something else when there would probably be a lot of value to mindfully just eating my breakfast. And just letting my head give my brain some space to think or driving to work without uh, music on or showering just with nothing, right? <laughs> um, I think that that's a big one that I that I have to keep very conscious of and I, I assume probably a lot of other people as well. For sure. I notice there are times that I feel kind of disconnected maybe from other people. And so I'll be making an effort to talk to somebody, but then my brain is thinking about something else. I'm not actually fully invested in the conversation or I'll pick up my phone or my phone will just even be in front of me and I'll see that it's gone off or my watch will send me a notification. And then after I leave that interaction with the person, I don't feel connected at all. I actually still feel kind of lonely. And then I have to right. remind myself, oh, that's why I feel that way is because I wasn't even fully present in the interaction. That's a good example. That's a really good example because being mindful also allows us to connect. Mm -hmm. And in a world where I think, personally, I think there's a huge absence of that. Um, and in part, I think it also feels stressful to connect. Um, those kinds of things get in the way of that, mm -hmm. for sure. What are other benefits that you guys see to practicing being more present in the moment? Maybe connection is one of them, right? What else? I know something we've talked about before is it's helpful for a lot of people who struggle with 
um, addictive behaviors or impulsive behaviors, any kind of urge. Um, typically those come when we're not being present, right? We're off somewhere else way in our head. And if we would just take a second to recognize where we are, what's around us, and be really present and be really grounded, um, I think it helps fight off a lot of urges or addictive behaviors or things like that. I think it increases performance in whatever you're choosing to do. I was having this thought process yesterday. In fact, as I walked past your office, uh, switching up my diet, it's, I've noticed yesterday it becomes very much a list of things I can't eat, mm. <laughs> which is really annoying. But I've also noticed a very big increase in what I am eating and now how I'm feeling. And I can see a huge difference in how I feel. Uh, I think you, me, and Ashley talked about that yesterday, <laughs> but I can already feel a difference and it's yeah. only been a week. You know what I mean? Performance is a, is a good one. I, I always ask, like when I work with high schoolers, I always ask them like, if they play any sports or if they do plays, and how much fun is it to play basketball when you're just playing basketball, when you're just at the game? And how much fun is it to play basketball when you're thinking about your girlfriend that just dumped you? And that's like all that's occupying your thoughts. You're probably having way less fun and playing way worse. So I think that's another a big benefit of being mindful. Right. Well, and uh, <clears throat> performance-related anxiety is really all about not being able to be present while you're performing. It's about being concerned about how you're going to perform, what you're going to do next, as opposed to just being in the moment and doing it. And so I think that performance is probably a really a really big benefit to being more mindful. Yeah, I think because it, it can give you that control over lots of different pieces of your life. If I am being an employee when I'm at work, I can be an effective employee. If I'm being dad when I'm at home, I can be dad. If I'm being student at school, I can be student. Mm -hmm. um, I think performance increases. So, I think there are some other things that mindfulness has been proven to help as well. One of them is a reduction in pain within your yeah. body, being able to learn how to be mindful in the present moment because when we're either in the future worried about what the pain is going to be like or thinking about how the past, long it's gonna last. right? Yeah. And thinking about the past of how bad it's been up to this point, some of those things can actually make our pain quite a bit worse. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So that's another benefit. Um, another thing that we've kind of been dancing around a little bit, but is stress reduction, just all the way around. There's mm -hmm. a lot of stress reduction when mindfulness becomes something that you practice regularly. Yeah. Um, there's along with stress reduction, I think, of like pressure. I think a lot of people feel a lot of pressure nowadays. And that's just, again, not being present, right? Because there's pressure to achieve something in the future or pressure to be better than you were before um, instead of just being now, being present. Yeah, I could always do with a little less pressure. That'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything else you guys want to add before we cut it here and move to the next video about uh, how do you do mindfulness? Any other last thoughts? You know, I would say that uh, just the last thing that I would say to for people to focus on is recognize where in your life you're not being mindful mm. so that you have some awareness about where you could possibly implement more of that, right? Like you said, um, just being aware that when you're in the shower, you're not actually just being present in the shower. I notice this all the time because I'll get done washing my hair and I'll be like, did I use conditioner? And did I use shampoo? Mm. And did I use them in the right order? And then I can't yeah. remember. And then <laughs> Is I have there to an over. order? There's an, yes, there's an order. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, but really, just myself noticing that reminds me like, oh, I'm clearly not being present in that sure, space. Yeah. And so that's some space that I could work on being more present. And when you have different spaces in your life where you start to notice, hey, I could be more present there, then when we talk about, well, how do you be present, we can, you know where it is you're working on doing that. Yeah. Because it's not reasonable to say to yourself, well, I'm just going to be present all day long. Our brains don't do that, and there's times we have to think about the past or the future. But being able to know where you'd like to be more present, that will give you some space to work with. I always think of like, I think everyone's had this experience when you're driving and you get somewhere and you're like, I don't remember how I got here. <laughs> <laughs> like, did I, you don't remember which route you took or if you almost got an accident, like nothing, there's just nothing. There's no recollection of the trip. Right. Um, I feel like I do that every time I cross a train track. I'm like, did I look both ways before I crossed? <laughs> right. <laughs> And it's after the fact. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. Well, thanks, everybody, for uh, joining us on this video. Like I said, we'll talk more about maybe some specifics of how to be more mindful and how you can practice it in your life on our next video. Um, but 
But in the meantime, think about places where you could probably be more mindful in your own life and the benefits of doing so. Because I think that they're, it's one of the most important parts of all of therapy in today's therapy world, I think. So it's a, it's a really useful skill to have. So thanks for joining us, joining us, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Hey, Jaden here. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you found something useful in today's episode. If you did and you want to keep up on the content we're going to be making, please subscribe, follow, or leave us a positive review. It helps us a lot. Again, thank you for being here, and we'll see you next time.